Over and over again, I heard constantly that his injuries, the event itself was fake. People said that to me and I never believed it because when you see Amran's face and how he responded to the things that were happening around him, he really was hurt bad. I am going to try showing where the scares are on his beautiful face today and in comparison to where he was injured that day in August 2016 in Aleppo. This isn't meant to be a gruesome way of explaining it only to prove to the scoffers and the skeptics who said over and over it never happened. It did happen and I want to tell Amran, I love you. When Amran was pulled from his house, it has been proven that the rebels were going to use Amran's injuries to create sympathy for their cause, but the social media kept saying that it wasn't real. That his injuries were fabricated to imply he was hurt, though he wasn't. First of all, when you see how Amran responded in the ambulance, he wiped his head of the blood from the raw wound on his left side, our right side. He didn't cry, he didn't react to anything. If you are suffering from shock, you won't feel pain, you won't know what's going on because your mind is numb. The skeptics didn't even want to say that because they knew he really was hurt bad. Clinton herself said two times during the debates for president that it was a scene she would never forget. I'll never forget it either because I saw a little boy who was hurt, but, Americans just see girls as important, all important, only important. So after the story was told, the media didn't care to talk about it anymore. I remember a day later, they blazoned a Syria girl who was also injured, meaning that we must emphasize a girl's suffering more than little Omran's injuries. It is pathetic how society must say only one gender counts and not both. I'm also saying most Americans are biased towards the genders because a woman or girl are all they want to talk about on the news, on television, in the movies. To me, Amran was a wake-up call on many fronts, not least of which is the gender issue. War is cruel, Amran proved that too. Amran suffered and it should never happen again. But I started to talk about Amran initially because boys are forgotten in America, they aren't cared about. They aren't even valued and that's why I started to bring up Amran. Then the longer I looked at his suffering, God told me this is about a child who suffered so much he never cried. He was scared when they put him in the ambulance, you saw him react to one reporter and he didn't know where he was or who these people were. Another point to make about this tragedy is that President Assad himself claimed within 24 hours that the entire event was fake, that it never happened either. Then we heard that Aleppo was being allowed to evacuate children and injured men and women from the city. Then Assad's forces came in and supposedly quarantined Amran and his family for a year, I ask you? Amran's father said that he was paid to allow the news media to globally exploit his son's injuries, but I think he was right to say that Assad's forces were already there too so he had to do what they said because he is an employee of the Syrian government. It's sad though that we don't have the chance to see how Amran progressed after the time he left the hospital. I emailed the Aleppo Media Center in the days after the story broke and this is what they told me, Amran has left the hospital with his mother and the family did not want to be disturbed. Then when I inquired again about him, they said they didn't know anything else. My friends I've met since the tragedy told me of other things that happened one that Amran's family had fled into northern Syria somewhere in the mountains and that was the last they had heard about him. A friend of Amran's family said he was the photographer who took Amran's picture in the ambulance and said that in the weeks after the event, he took a toy to Amran and he gave a slight grin showing he appreciated it. I had always thought Amran was a little boy, who never knew happiness or love or joy. Now I know so much more about him than I ever did when the story broke last year. To try explaining where the main injury was, look at Amran's right side around his eyebrow. He definitely has a scare there and that is where the injury was in the ambulance. To the skeptics, I say you were wrong, you wanted to make this thing a hoax and now you've been found out. I love Amran and I always will, no matter what the social media tries to say about him. This little boy deserves to live and I will never feel any different about that. I think he should be allowed to come America, he has suffered too much for any child, anywhere in the world. 
My only wish would be to tell Omran that I love him, the world loves him and cares about him. I wish someone who knows Omran or maybe interviews him will hug him and tell him, the world loves you Omran. My own personal wish would be to touch his face and say we love you Omran. Please never forget that God loves you even more than anyone on this planet and he always will. Go, I say go away, you bother me.